Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Which of the following is are the initiatives of UNESCO? Global Geopark Network, World Heritage Education Program, Man and Biosphere Program, Creative Cities Network. The answer to this is 1, 2, 3 and 4. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the World Heritage Day. One of the initiatives happens to be UNESCO Global Geoparks. These are single unified geographical areas of international geological significance and are managed with a holistic concept of protection, education and sustainable development. Then we have another program, World Heritage Education Program. This was initiated back in the year 1994 which gives young people a chance to voice their concerns and become involved in the protection of common cultural and natural heritage. Then we have the Man and the Biosphere program where this aims to establish a scientific basis, enhance the relationship between people and the environment and it focuses on safeguarding natural environment. Then finally, what we have is the Creative Cities Network. This was created back in the year 2004 to promote cooperation with and among the cities that have identified creativity as a strategic factor for sustainable urban development. So remember, all these are the initiatives of UNESCO and as part of the assignment, you have to put on the comment section which of the cities in India come under the Creative Cities Network. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the following statements is are incorrect? A government resorts to reduction of repo rate to reduce inflation. A government cut its spending to reduce inflation. Inflation target to be set by Reserve Bank of India in consultation with the government of India once every five years. Which of the statements are incorrect? Since it is asking for the incorrect statement, the answer to this is one and three only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the inflation. What is repo rate? When we speak about repo rate, it is the fixed interest rate at which Reserve Bank of India provides overnight liquidity to the banks against the collateral of the government and other approved securities under the liquidity adjustment facility. Basically, when we speak about repo rate, it is the rate at which banks would be able to get the money from the Reserve Bank of India. The repo rate is usually used by the monetary authorities to control the inflation. So basically what would happen? In case of the inflation, central banks increase the repo rate and not decrease the repo rate. As a result, the first statement is wrong. When you look into the third statement, inflation target will be set by the government of India and not by the Reserve Bank of India and this will be in consultation with the Reserve Bank of India. So the RBI Act also provides for the inflation target to be set by the government of India in consultation with the Reserve Bank of India once every five year. So it is not Reserve Bank of India consulting the government of India, but it is the government of India consulting the Reserve Bank of India. So the first and the third statement are wrong. The second statement is right. So it is asking for the incorrect statement. So the answer to this would be one and three only. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the given statements with respect to INSV Tarini is are correct? It is an indigenously built sailing vessel which was inducted in the Indian Navy in 1971. The first Indian all-women crew circumnavigated the globe in INSV Tarini. It was inducted in the Indian Navy with the objective of ocean surveillance. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is two only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to the INSV Tarini. When we look into the first option, the first option is wrong. That is because yes, it is indigenously built, but it was inducted into the Indian Navy back in the year 2017 and not in 1971. The second statement is right. The first Indian all-women crew circumnavigated the globe in the INSV Tarini and the third statement is wrong because this happens to be a sailboat and it is not for ocean surveillance. Since the first and the third statement are wrong, second statement is right. The answer to this would be two only. 
Now let's look into the next practice question. Which of the given statements with respect to National Technical Research Organization is our correct? NTRO was created after the 1999 Kargil War as a dedicated technical intelligence agency. It has the right to lawfully intercept and monitor communications externally. National Critical Information Infrastructure Protection Center is a unit under NTRO. National Technical Textiles Mission was launched by NTRO. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3 only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the Hindu makes a reference to National Technical Research Organization. When we look into the option, yes, the NTRO was created after the 1999 Kargil War as a dedicated technical intelligence agency. The first statement is right. When we look into the second statement, it has the right to lawfully intercept and monitor communications externally. Once again, this is the right statement. The third statement, National Critical Information Infrastructure Protection Center is a unit under NTRO but the fourth statement is wrong. When we speak about National Technical Research Organization, it is a technical intelligence agency which comes under the National Security Advisor in the Prime Minister's office. It has the same norms of conduct similar to that of RAW which is India's external agency and similar to that of Intelligence Bureau which happens to be India's internal intelligence agency. Now let's look into the next practice question. What is R common to the two historical places known as Ajanta and Mahabalipuram? Both were built in the same period. Both belong to the same religious denomination. Both have rocket monuments. Select the correct answer using the code given below. The answer to this is 3 only. This happens to be a previous year question from the year 2016. The first option is wrong. That is because they were built in different periods. When it comes to Ajanta, it was built during 200 BC to 650 AD by Vakataka kings. When it comes to Mahabalipuram, it was built by the Pallava kings during the 7th to the 8th century. So the first statement is wrong. When we look into the second statement, the Ajanta caves is more to do with Buddhism and when it comes to Mahabalipuram, it's more to do with the Hindu temple. So the second statement is wrong and the third statement is right where both both are the rocket monument. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is parboiled rice. What is this parboiled rice? This is also called as converted rice. It is also called as the easy cook rice. This is one of the rice that has been partially boiled in the husk. Since it is partially boiled in the husk, it is called as parboiled rice. So basically, Parboiled rice refers to that particular rice which has been partially boiled at the paddy stage before milling. There are three processes when it comes to parboiling. What are those? One is what is called as soaking. Second is what is called as steaming. Third is what is called as drying. What is soaking here? The raw unhusk rice, also called as paddy rice, is soaked in warm water to increase the moisture content. Then we have steaming, which is nothing but the rice is steamed until the starch converts into a gel. The heat of this process also kills the bacteria and other microbes. Finally, what we have is the drying. This rice is slowly dried to reduce the moisture content so that it can be milled. Are all varieties suitable for par boiling? Yes. It is ideal to use long slender varieties to prevent breakage during the milling. However, some of the aromatic is not engaged in it. That is because it may lose its aroma. So some of the aromatic varieties are not used for the par boiled. What are the benefits of par boiled rice? It makes the rice tougher. It reduces the chance of rice kernel breaking during milling, parboiling increases the nutrient content of the rice and it also has high resistance to insects and the fungi. When it comes to the negatives, it also becomes darker. It may also have unpleasant smell because it is boiled and at the same time, since there is a particular process, the cost of it may also increase as well. These are some of the disadvantages with respect to parboiled rice. It is this that we have to understand in reference to the parboiled rice. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.